Have you ever had a hard time locating a game object in your Unity scene view or project hierarchy, wondering what you named it or where you may have stuffed it? Yeah, I know about this situation all too well, believe me. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to approach this situation to alleviate this kind of problem. Now, I can't stress enough how important it is to have good, consistent naming conventions for your game objects throughout your project. Good naming conventions will allow you to quickly identify and locate different files throughout the scene hierarchy or project folders, ultimately leading to increased productivity and production over the course of a project. I mean, let's face it, nobody likes to be looking for things, do they? Do you see the hidden object? Every society has been... So what do good naming conventions even look like and how do we go about implementing them? Well, this is where prefixes and suffixes are quite useful. So let's think of an example. Say we have a UI component prefab, something like a lives module or a you know title panel overlay or something like that. So no naming conventions might look like this. You see, there's nothing in this name to suggest this is a UI component. So what we might wanna do is add a UI underscore as a prefix. Now you can do this as a suffix if you like, but I personally prefer to use uh, prefixes. Uh, why prefixes? Well, you see the Unity project folder is sorted automatically alphabetically by Unity. So all the different um, objects which I've denoted with a prefix of UI underscore will be all grouped together nicely. Where if they were a suffix, I would not get the same kind of efficient grouping. So when you use this approach, you can then leverage the Unity search boxes very efficiently. You see, in the search boxes now, I could just type UI underscore, and it will reveal all the different UI components. Because if I had a large project with a plethora of different prefabs, you know, um, trees, enemies, play components, and uh, different, different things like that, uh, then this UI component will get lost in that list. So now I can just type UI underscore and all the UI components will be revealed and I can choose which one I like. This prefix or suffix approach can be used for any type of game object really. Maybe like a background or tree types or enemy types, collectibles, items. You could even use it for sound files, prefixing them with a SND underscore so that you can easily find your sound files within your project. In my own projects, I typically prefix all my background components with a BG underscore, all my UI components with a UI, buttons with a BNT, or BTN, yeah, BTN, sorry, <laughs> BNT, and particle effects with a PE or even FX. FX is kind of like a, a nice prefix for all kind of effect types. As an example, in my project, I have a lot of these different prefabs that hold within them particle effects that I use for, you know, um, combat impacts, blood splatters, um, skill effects and power-ups and things like that. Now, I couldn't possibly remember each of these um, names by memory. So all I need to do if I need to find one within my prefabs folder, I just type in PE underscore and all the different prefabs which hold particle effects within them will be revealed to me so I can conveniently pick one that I need to use. And you should be as descriptive as you need to be. Don't try to be some kind of a Russian hacker or Edward Snowden type and try to use cryptic naming conventions for your game objects like R underscore one three J K L M. I mean, it's just gonna make it harder for you to find later on. Name your files as if you are naming them for a stranger. Because as you know, when you return to a project after a long hiatus or break, Often the project looks like it's been created by a stranger. So if you have good naming conventions, you can easily come back to it and pick up where you left off. So feel free to use prefixes or suffixes like, you know, enemy underscore, tree underscore, weapon underscore, things like this that make sense when you look at it visually. Just try to keep it reasonable. Having a prefab name like the prefab that sits on the player's head, AKA helmet, is probably not ideal. And try to be consistent if you can. If you choose prefixes, try to stick with the prefix. Don't suddenly, midway through the project, jump to a suffix. If you do, go back and refactor the other names. Because then you have one expectation of how to find an object by typing, say, a prefix, and all the ones that are using a suffix are not gonna come up. And depending on the type of game you're making, you may need a more robust categorization system than simply having a prefix or a suffix. Say you have a game with a lot of trees. You know, you have um, tall trees, short trees, 
um, round trees, oak trees, willow trees, birch trees, this kind of situation. So having a tree underscore one, tree underscore two, tree underscore three, all the way to 50 is not going to quite cut it. So at this point, you want a subcategory. So you might choose to categorize the trees by type. So you might have tree underscore pine, tree underscore oak, tree underscore birch. So then you might need additional variations, maybe like you have a big and a small version of all of these. So you might then do tree underscore pine underscore small, tree underscore pine underscore big, and the same for the other types. And then perhaps you might have variations of each of those small and large trees. So at that point, you can then append a one, two, three to denote a, a minor variation. And then to supplement all of this, you'll want to have a good folder structure, which all your game objects sit inside. And that goes for both the scene view and the project hierarchy. In the scene view, you can kind of group things into empty game objects. That's quite effective, you know, tree holder or things like this. And in the project folder, which is a bit more important, you'll want to have a well thought out folder structure, sorting things by, you know, prefabs, whether something's audio, graphics, uh, uh, external library, plugins, materials. You don't want to just dump everything into one root folder. You want to kind of break it up. That way you can kind of um, filter things out just by navigating through these folders and then also combining that with using the search field. Very powerful. And another thing, the Unity search input fields within the IDE need to be part of your active workflow. Now this may sound obvious to seasoned um, developers, but it's amazing how many beginners don't know this. Um, and I've coached people and I've had sessions through TeamViewer and I've watched people use the Unity IDE. And a lot of people are still just traversing with the scroll wheel, completely oblivious to the search fields. So please get into the habit of using the search fields. It's gonna save you a lot of time and make your development process much easier. So the other good thing about this naming convention is that if you ever work with an artist, most of the professionals will provide their assets with this kind of a naming structure. So you can see here, I've got this underwater tile set that I've had commissioned. And I'll just switch to list view. And you can see the naming convention is very similar. So it's very useful because it gives me a level of consistency between my own assets within Unity. But in the end, these conventions largely come down to personal preference. What I've shown you here are some of my personal preferences that I've also adopted from other developers that I've worked with or come across in the past. If you have some conventions that already work for you, feel free to continue using them. Don't feel obligated to suddenly change things up. So that's it guys, I hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, please do give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you guys.